Welcome to episode number 23. I'm CJ Werleman. Thank you for joining us. This week we examine one of the most horrific aspects of the Uyghur genocide, namely the slaughter of concentration camp detainees to satisfy domestic and global demand for organ transplantations. But first a quick reminder to click on the subscribe button below so you don't miss out on any future episodes. Now let's get into it. Human rights organizations have proved beyond a shadow of a doubt that China executes its political prisoners and then sells their removed organs on the local and international organ transplant market. Here's Mr. Hamid Sabi addressing the UN Human Rights Council in September of 2019. Play the clip. The Vice President, the Durban Declaration affirms the urgent need to prevent, combat and eliminate all forms of trafficking in persons, including organ trafficking. China Tribunal, a People's Tribunal chaired by Sir Jeffrey Nice, considered all available evidence and concluded that forced organ harvesting from prisoners of conscience, including the religious and ethnic minorities of Falun Gong and others, have been committed for years throughout China on a significant scale, and that it continues today. This involves hundreds of thousands of victims. Acting on independent legal advice, the Tribunal concluded that commission of crimes against humanity, against Falun Gong and others, had been proved beyond reasonable doubt. You see, China has always had a massive problem in meeting its need for organ transplant donors, given China has one of the lowest organ donor rates in the world due to a cultural reluctance amongst the Chinese population. By point of comparison, 45% of Americans are registered organ donors, meaning nearly half of the United States has given the government their consent to pass on their organs to a transplant recipient. In China, however, the voluntary donor rate is fewer than one person for every two million Chinese citizens, which means each year there are fewer than 10,000 available organ donors for the 1.5 million Chinese citizens in need of an organ transplantation. To bridge this gap, China executes its political prisoners and enforceably removes their organs, including their eyes, kidneys, liver and heart. And as we know all too well, China does not possess a shortage of political prisoners. Given it holds upwards of 3 million Uyghur Muslims in a network of concentration camps throughout East Turkestan, or what it calls Xinjiang. Several years ago, Dr. Enver Todi gave this testimony describing how he was forced to carry out the first ever removal of live organs from a Uyghur prisoner in 1995. Watch this. The gunshots were heard, we rushed in. An armed officer directed us to the far right corner where I can see a civilian closed man lying on the ground with a single bullet wound to his right chest. My chief surgeon then ordered me, ordered and guided me extracted the liver and two kidneys. The man was alive. He tried to resist my scalpel cut, but too weak to avoid my action. There was bleeding. He was still alive, but I didn't feel guilty. In fact, I didn't feel anything but like a full programmed robot doing its task. I thought I was carrying my duty to eliminate that eliminate the enemy of the state. When I spoke with Dr. Toti two years ago, he described him how blood and DNA samples are forcibly taken from every Uyghur detainee, with the data then placed into a national live organ matching database. Essentially, this database allows China to slaughter Uyghur Muslim detainees on demand. Last year, a Chinese nurse told an online news program exactly that. The Uyghurs are being, and I quote, slaughtered on demand. She claims to have personally witnessed 37 Saudi nationals become recipients of organs from what she called, quote, the people of Xinjiang. Roll the clip. Unfortunately, the video comes without an option to add subtitles, but I wanted to reference the video nevertheless. So you can go back and verify I've reported her words accurately. Now in the ordinary world, and I mean everywhere that's not China, when a person is in need of an organ, they are added to a wait list, whereby the patient waits, sometimes for years, for a matching organ donor to become available. But with millions of Uyghur detainees and other political prisoners on hand, China has now reversed engineered the organ matching process. As explained by the International Coalition to End Transplant Abuse in China in this clip here, play. Countries have a voluntary donation system. Recipients wait for an organ to become available, sometimes for three or four years. When a donor dies, the best match person on the waiting list is rushed to the hospital to receive their transplant. China has a very different system with reverse matching. Recipients pay for an organ to be made available. 
A prisoner who is the best match for the paying recipient is chosen from a large pool of detainees. The prisoner is then killed and their organs extracted for transplantation. Transplants for organs such as hearts, livers and kidneys are scheduled in advance and performed in a matter of weeks. It is not possible for an ethical organ donation system to provide transplants. Now it's important to understand that nothing I'm telling you here constitutes new information. ETAC, along with Human Rights Watch, the China Tribunal, Uyghur Tribunal, and an array of independent investigations affirm claims China is executing Uyghurs in order to profit from the organ transplant black market. Today, China has established an industrial-scale forced organ harvesting program, deriving huge profits from marketing and selling forcibly removed organs from executed Uyghur detainees to organ transplant tourists. In fact, Chinese hospitals now openly advertise human organs as though they were a fashion accessory. Watch this. Madison Gutman say there's another possible motive driving this practice, profit. In the past, some Chinese hospitals even advertised the costs of new organs, $98,000 to $130,000 for a liver, $130 to $160,000 for a heart. By reviewing Chinese medical publications, hospital website data, and making calls to hospitals, Gutman and Mattis estimate there could be 60,000 to 100,000 transplants still taking place each year in China. And here's the thing. When you call any of these hospitals, you can make a booking for a specific date to receive your desired organ transplant, which means what? It means China controls the exact date the organ donor is to die. Here's an Israeli doctor explaining this atrocity. Play. Heart surgeon Dr. Jacob Levy is president of the Israel Society of Transplantation. While kidney transplants can involve obtaining a kidney from a living donor, that's not the case with a heart transplant. If a patient was promised to undergo a heart transplant on a specific date, this could only mean that the, those who promised that knew ahead of time when his potential donor would be dead. We now have a library full of documentation proving China is slaughtering Muslims and other religious minorities on demand, including Chinese government documents, hospital records, eyewitness accounts, and even secretly recorded phone calls with government officials. Roll it. In one forensically examined phone call, the former PLA Minister for Health, Bai Zhuzhong, stated that ex-President Jiang Zemin directly ordered the killing of Falun Gong practitioners for their organs. Recently, an international human rights organization described to me how receiving an organ transplant in China is like hiring a hitman. He said, and I quote, The organ harvesting in this case is quite similar to a contract killing except the agreement is made with China instead of directly with the killer. But you don't know the name of the victim, you just know that the killer will find a suitable donor for you." End quote. We also know China is now marketing organs removed from Uyghur Muslims as halal organs to wealthy transplant recipients in Muslim countries, claiming their kidneys and livers are not blemished by the consumption of alcohol or pork. Several years ago, the director of the Saudi Center for Organ Transplants told a local newspaper that more than 400 Saudi individuals purchase organs on black markets in China and elsewhere. So sophisticated is China's organ black market that East Turkestan's major airport has a human organ transportation green puff, which provides a channel for large numbers of Uyghur donors to be shipped out of the country to transplant recipients within China and the rest of the world. In fact, China Southern Airlines boasted had shipped more than 500 human organs in a single two month period in 2019, while marketing its green passage for transplant recipients. I mean what? Remember, this is a country in which fewer than one out of every two million Chinese citizens is a voluntary organ donor. But now its airports and airlines boast organ transport channels and facilities, with medical tourists from all over the world flying to China to fast track the availability of a suitable organ. Worse, multinational corporations have become entangled with China's criminality, with at least 28 Western corporations either unwittingly or knowingly profiting from China's illegal organ harvesting program across all levels of the transplantation logistics and supply chain, including organ preservation, immune suppressive drugs, transplant diagnostics, medical robotics, and other services and products. What we also know based on newly published testimony from a former Chinese police detective is the worst kind of horrors are being inflicted upon Uyghur concentration camp detainees. 
He said Uyghurs are hung from the ceiling and then subject to sexual violence, electrocutions and other means of torture, including water, food and sleep deprivation. Last year, a trusted source within the Chinese government told me how Xi Jinping took a top secret decision in 2014 regarding the Uyghur minority. He ordered one third to be killed, another one third to be locked up and a final one third to be forcibly indoctrinated into the Chinese communist ideology. My source also said the one third assigned to be locked up served only one of five horrific purposes. Forced labor, biomedical testing, biological weapons testing, proof of life videos, and of course, organ harvesting. I mean, we're not only talking about the most morally despicable regime on the face of the earth, but also the largest industrial scale slaughter of religious minority since the Holocaust. So what are you and I going to do to stop this? I mean, what is the world waiting for? Smoking chimney stacks? Our silence and inaction makes us complicit to this genocide. Well, that's a wrap for this week. Thank you for tuning in. Please like and subscribe to this channel and help spread the word of your friends and family on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And a reminder to please consider supporting this endeavor by becoming a member of the show at patreon.com slash cjwellman. We can't produce, sustain, and grow this show without your help. We offer exclusive benefits to those who do. But for now, good night, good morning, or good day, wherever you are, and stay blessed. Thank you.